Hi everybody. My name is Timothy Trespass. I am a targeted individual. There's a couple of things I wanted to talk about. See if I can remember them both. This phone is strange. It's like you put it in front of you and it turns black. Um, I guess it has to do with how much light is coming from above. Anyway, I was just reading the newspaper. The New York paper, whatever crappy rag it is. Pardon my French. And um, there was a story on the front page about this nice old blind guy. I don't know what his name was. Rufus or something. Um, nice old blind guy, colored man, with his guide dog. And for whatever medical reason, whatever happened, the man became faint and passed out. His dog tried to keep him from falling into the subway tracks. He didn't. He fell into the subway tracks. The dog went into the subway tracks with him and stood there next to him while the train was coming. Um, the train began to come, uh, and I guess he was on 125th Street or something. There's a curve where the train comes in, so they can't see right down the station. And this guy's sitting in the tracks with a bump on his head, and he's like, you know, dazed and confused. And luckily, there was a, a transit worker in the station who yelled out to him, you know, lay down, put your head down, lay down in the, in the space between the tracks. Guy didn't hear him, sitting there rubbing his head, trains coming, screeching into the station. Lay down, you know, put your head between the, the tracks, lay down in that space. Doesn't hear him. Finally, he yells again, lay down, you know, put your head between. So the guy hears him, he lays down, and the dog is sitting there. The dog lays down. The train runs over them. Excuse me. You know, a hundred ton subway train coming in at uh, 45 miles an hour, screeching on the rails. And, uh, and they, you know, the police come, everything, they move the train. And the guy's okay. The guy's okay, and the dog is okay. The guy was okay, and the dog was okay. Guy got a bump on his head from hitting the, hitting this, you know, he didn't hit the rail or anything, so he was, you know, the dog was fine. And I'm sitting there in the deli reading this newspaper, which obviously has been written for the most possible emotional effect, you know. And I start crying, like, uncontrollably crying, you know, and I'm like trying to hide it from everybody in the in the deli because there's like a hundred people in there and you know, I'm bawling my eyes out and snot running down my face and <laughs> trying to <laughs> pretend it ain't happening um, yeah, the part that made me cry was when they asked the guy later in the hospital you know, tell us about this adventure and what did the guy say? The blind guy with the dog who just escaped death narrowly. He says, I believe the Lord has something for me to do and it's not my time yet. That's what got me because I realized at that moment that one of the things this man was supposed to do was show me. Excuse me. The power of God. You know, because I'm here with all of my questions and my my trying to figure it outness. You know, like what the fuck is going on? Here I am. I'm just this guy. You know, I, I'm not. I'm not a bad person. I don't hate people. I don't hurt people. I don't kill people. I don't rob people. I don't even wish them bad, you know? And I got these motherfuckers trying to turn me into a murderous, you know, and destroying my life and my health and my mind.
And I can't even fight back because I don't know who they are. And I don't have access to money and technology to figure out what the fuck they're doing. So... Uh, I forgot what I was saying. Right. Me with all my questions. You know, and I'm trying to figure it out. And I'm like, why... Why is it that if God cares about me, if Christ cares about me, he does these things for me, you know? And like at the time, he's holding me in his hand or whatever, and, and I'm getting through some horrible thing that I think is the end of the freaking world, and I'm gonna die, and blah, blah, blah. And I come out the other side unscathed, except for a lot of burned hair and freaked outness. And I realized that, you know, there's no way I would have gotten through that without God. Or whatever this is. And at the same time, all this bad stuff is happening. How do you reconcile that? You know, how do you reconcile that? That God cares about you, but only so much? That God cares about you and this is important for your growth? Character building? I mean, we're like on the edge of, of losing our souls if we follow the instructions of this crap in our heads. And these people and the things they want us to do and the stuff they say to us. You know, whether it's real or, or just a, an act. You know... That's the questions I have. Like, you know, if God is omnipotent and knows everything, then, you know, the beginning and the end and all that stuff they talk about in these books that I'm looking at, trying to figure out what's really going on in this world. And I know it's all been tainted and colored and whatever, and at the same time they're trying to tell me it's true. There's just so many questions. Why do we suffer so much? It's like the universal question. And those people who aren't suffering, they don't really give a shit. Because they're not suffering. You know, how many times have you been sick and been like, uh, oh, I'm so sick and, and you know, you, you commiserate with all the other sick people around you and then you feel better and you're like, and you forget. You forget. <laughs> Excuse me, that was disgusting. You forget how how hard it is to be broken sometimes when you're okay, you know? Um, those of us who are broken, we don't forget. No, we know. And there are plenty of people who, who are empathic and, and help and, you know, people who dedicate their lives to healing and assisting others. And, you know, sometimes I wonder why the heck I didn't do that. I got misled somewhere. Or maybe not, you know, that's the thing. How do you know? You know, if you believe in this God, and you believe in all this stuff that's supposedly true about it, and the world, and us, then how is it that you can make mistakes? You know? Or well, you're allowed to make mistakes. Or are you? You know? Like... I don't know. There's so many times when I just feel afraid and alone and unsure and insecure and, and you know, without foundation. They've stolen my foundation. Yeah, granted, it was an illusion, but it was mine. And I was living in it. I thought it was, uh, you know, solid. I thought it was built on the ground, on rock. <laughs> no, it was built in my mind on a pack of lies and a bunch of dreams. You know, you rip that stuff away, you get those cobwebs out of your head, and what are you left with? There's the cold, hard reality of life and death, and the struggle to survive. You know, we see that in nature, you know, one thing eating another thing, and, and we're up here on the top of the food chain wondering, 
you know, what we're going to eat and not wondering about who's eating us. Anyway, I digress.